You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Aaron Walker and Heather Dyer. Tune in weekly to get inspired and make good food. The thing is, I went down to the freezer and I was looking around. I'm like, what have I gotten here for dinner? I don't know. And then I was, I was like, hmm, maybe I should just pull these shanks out. Mm-hmm. So that's what got me down this path. Okay. I'm, I'm really excited about this. We should probably do like an intro piece now. <laughs> just leave it the way it is. Welcome to Three Kitchens Podcast. <laughs> it's already underway. You're joining us mid-conversation. Yeah. <laughs> We can barely hit the record button with our thoughts. They're just running. (laughs) This was an impromptu recording because, as I just said, I decided last kind of last minute, I'm going to cook some beef shanks. And what do you do with shanks, Erin? I think you said you were going to make osobuco. I think it's kind of almost the only thing people do with shanks or the most popular, perhaps. Right. Not the only, just the most popular. And I think we also, when we got the meat from Charlotte, it was a cut that she said, not very many people know this cut, but it's delicious. And she liked it in Osobuco and really encouraged us to make this from our wonderful little meat package that we got from her. Yeah, so this was meat that was gifted to us from Chatsworth Farm, and I'm really excited to cook it. So also, Uko, it's Italian, if you didn't know that language I was speaking. (laughs) My accent didn't give it away. (laughs) No, (laughs) the accent didn't give it away. I'm sure Italians are like, oh, listen to the way that woman says it. Okay, so I just did a quick little Mm -hmm. bit of research before we hopped on here. Not a lot. So, you know, if you're looking for the history of also buco, you've come to the wrong place. But (laughs) also apparently means bone. Okay. And buco means whole. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, Whole when as look- in W H O L E or whole as in H O L E? H O L E. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at a shank, mm. it's the upper part of the leg of a cow and it's cut kind of cross section like a steak. It looks like a big steak with a round bone in the middle of it. It's that a gorgeous bone. cut of meat. Like it looks really and beautiful. And it's quite marbled and. Yeah. Apparently it can be a little bit tough, which is why braising it is the best technique. And that is how this dish is made. Ah, you want to cook it slow and braise it for a long time so that like the bone marrow can seep out into your dish and the meat falls apart. And that's why the bone is important, I think. Okay. Well, I guess as it cooks, it kind of like, it's almost like making its own little broth. As, as the bone goes into the liquid, maybe? Yeah, I guess. I mean, um, I read that the bone marrow is traditionally dug out of the bone at the end, so you it won't oh. all come out, but you okay. want to get it out somehow because that's delicious stuff in there. Oh, gosh, yes. Um, traditionally, it's dug out using a long-handled spoon. I'm going to attempt an Italian word here. It's called an essatore. I probably said that wrong. Okay. And that translates to tax collector which i thought was really cute (laughs) are you sure you didn't just pronounce it so bad that google told you it was the wrong thing (laughs) i didn't even attempt the google okay okay. pronunciation thing um i just read it It, and it looks to me like esatore and it's apparently means tax collector which i thought was so cute it's like i think the cook should be the tax collector. So everybody hand over your bones. Yeah. You know, if you get one on your plate, <laughs> hand it back to the cook who gets to scoop out the marrow and eat it herself. Because I was gonna say, it. when you dish it out, you just kind of like scoop out the marrow and then place it on the plate for someone. <laughs> I just just keep the bones for yourself, whoever's cooking, and just serve the meat. So yeah. what kind of stuff is in this? What are your veggies? What's your base that you're you're making this in? Because I've never, I don't think I've ever eaten or attempted this dish. Me either. So this will be new to both of us. In fact, I always thought that also buco was made with oxtail, which it can be done mm. with. And I think traditionally, like the original earliest recipe, I guess, was with veal, veal shanks. 
Oh, okay. That would be quite a bit smaller, I would think. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe in that case, each person would get a nice little bone right. on their plate. That makes um, sense. Yeah, we have beef shanks and we have two of them. So perhaps you and I should have the bones. I don't have a, a tax collector spoon. I will come by <laughs> yeah. to collect the but tax. <laughs> use a knife or something. And <laughs> scoop it oh, up. Oh yeah. So you're going to braise this dish. So I have found a recipe since it is quite warm out right now and I have plans to be out for the afternoon. I thought I'm going to set it in the crock pot. So if you also are in a warm place, you don't have to wait till a cold winter's day to make also bufko. You could put this in your barbecue as well. Mm. Like if you put it in a Dutch oven in your barbecue, if you're around and you, um, of course you can put it in your oven if it's not going to overheat your house, but I'm doing this one in the crock pot. Mm, that sounds like a good way to cut the cost too, by using a countertop appliance. Mm -hmm. And just set it and forget it. Of course, it's my favorite. Either in the slow cooker itself or probably in a separate pan. I think you start with like a separate pan and do chopped or minced onion, carrots, and celery. Okay. Is that called like the Holy Trinity or something? What's there's a name for it? I probably I, said I feel like one. it's like the classic Italian base of like everything starts with onion, carrot, and celery. Well, the Italian word is sofrito, but I think there's like also some English. Okay. I can't remember. So you're going to start with that in your frying pan. Then you're going to soften them, take them out and put them into the slow cooker. Okay. Then season your shanks with salt and pepper and dredge them in flour and then brown them on both sides in that same pan. And then take them out when they're lightly brown, put them on top of the vegetables that are in your slow cooker now and mince garlic and put that on top of the meat. Then in that same frying pan, add white wine to deglaze your pan, tomato passata, which is like just basic tomato puree. Mm, okay. Not so thick as paste, but not a sauce, just pureed tomato, which you can buy in a oh, can. Okay. Yeah. Or they have like the big tall jars of it, don't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And chicken stock. Mm. Bring that to a boil and scrape your pan. Then you're going to pour that over the meat in the slow cooker and set it for eight hours. Oh, okay. And that's it. So it's a tomato white wine base, basically, Ooh. for your braising. And I think I'm probably going to throw some herbs in there, I think, because it's sitting. I've got some hmm. lime mm -hmm. and rosemary, and I think those would be good. That does sound good. Just put a couple of stems in there. And traditionally, it's served with risotto. Ah, but I'm not making risotto. I will not have time. The whole point is that I'm <laughs> putting it to cook while I'm out. And risotto takes a bit of time and attention that I won't have tomorrow. But that does sound really delicious. I really like maybe a mushroom risotto. Yeah. Or something with oh. saffron in it or like I, I can just imagine it would be really delicious with a risotto. Yeah, that that does sound. Oh, I like that. Maybe I'll do mashed potatoes. Ooh, mashed potatoes might be good. I think you could also just I mean, whatever you would serve with like a stew or yeah. raised meat oh sometimes i like uh egg noodles kind of like when i make a goulash i like to do mm -hmm. egg noodles with it and these flavors are kind of reminding me of that yeah just put that over the noodles mm -hmm. okay i went and googled oh, okay what did you your holy trinity <laughs> oh the holy oh. trinity is the trio of onion celery and green bell pepper Oh, and that's what's used in Cajun and Creole dishes. But I wrong. think the mirepoix is like the French base of right. things. The sofrito is this. That's right. One. Yeah. And so, yeah, so these are all the, so the Holy Trinity applies to Southern United States cooking. Cajun. <laughs> okay. Cajun cooking. Cool. Mirepoix or sofrito. Well, in this case, we're talking Italian. Yeah. So it's the sofrito. I also read that it is served with a condiment on the plate, which is finely chopped parsley, garlic, and lemon zest. Oh. I read it after I'd been to the store, and I don't recall if I have fresh parsley. So I may or may not <laughs> yeah. have that for us. I'm thinking, though, that like raw garlic just chopped like that might be a bit harsh. I'm not sure. I do like the idea of the lemon, though. That's interesting. Yeah, like I'm trying to figure out this lemon flavor with these 
with this tomato based sauce flavor because this isn't the first time we've seen lemon with tomato based sauces and mm -hmm. it's making me curious maybe all you need is just a, a squirt oh. of lemon over your dish i just there's something about the when i read the lemon zest i thought oh that somehow that makes sense to me i don't mm. know it sounds good interesting and that's called a gremolata oh. the um condiment Look at all these words. You're learning all the Italian. <laughs> okay, one more little fun research bit that I will share, and we will see if it's true. There was a, an American poet named Billy Collins, and he wrote a poem called Osobuco. He must have loved this dish so much because he wrote a poem all about it. <laughs> Can I just say it is my favorite thing ever that you are sharing another poem with us here on Three Kitchens Podcast. What other poem did I share? You wrote your oh, own no. little rhyme <laughs> about the purple jam I made. And now here you are digging up more poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I did not write even a word of this. No, but you're sharing it. <laughs> I'm not going to read you the whole poem. It's just called Osobuco by Billy Collins. And it's all about how he just, he loves it so much. And then it says, by tonight, the lion of contentment has placed a warm, heavy paw on my chest, and I can only close my eyes and listen to the drums of woe throbbing in the distance and the sound of my wife's laughter on the telephone in the next room. <laughs> like he's just so, you should feel so content after eating this, that it's like the lion's paw I, is I like this. <laughs> Just, Just cracks there. Me. This is great. This is so great. It inspires so much contentment. Well, we shall see if we are that content after eating crock pot also buco. Hey listeners, I hope you're enjoying this fun episode. Did you know you can find this recipe on our website? We post all the recipes for each episode on threekitchenspodcast.com and we even include recipes that we're not making for the podcast, just things we make every day in our kitchen. Leave a comment, tell us what you like about the recipe or what you don't like or how you zhuzhed it up. You can find the link in our show notes or type it in threekitchenspodcast.com. All right, so let's talk about slow cooker also buco. Did we record a first half for this already? Uh huh. Do you remember the poem? Oh, right. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for showing up, Erin. So we talked in the first half about yes. uh, the sofrito, the onion, carrot, and celery. We talked about the bone marrow, digging it out with the spoon called the tax collector. We talked about the poem being described as uh, the lion of contentment placing a warm, heavy paw on your chest. That's right. Thank you for summarizing this for <laughs> my very lacking <laughs> brain. <laughs> no problem. Okay. All right. I'm ready to talk about it now. <laughs> Excellent. Don't edit out all of this because it's good. <laughs> Uh, for this also buco, we talked in the first half about the cuts of meat and what you might be picturing is that cut that looks kind of like a steak with a circular bone in the middle of it. Right. And often if you, if you look up recipes and you see pictures, the also buco, you have that nice round bone in there. My shanks did not have that. They're bigger kind of oval shaped and almost like a T-bone shaped bone in them it was really big so it must have been higher up on that leg piece is what i'm thinking yeah charlotte if you're listening you're our resident you're the three kitchens podcast resident beef expert <laughs> please put a comment on it on socials and tell us um maybe the difference okay so so my um sh beef shanks were looked a little bit different but if that's the case with what you've bought as well don't worry about it it doesn't matter what you want is that delicious beef and i think because it has a bone you're getting the flavor of anytime yeah. you cook the meat with the bone you're getting more oh. depth of flavor from it so yeah. yeah so don't worry about the bone shape and because mine were big and i'm putting it into first of all uh, browning it in the skillet and then putting it into my crock pot. Right. They right. were too big. <laughs> I had to cut 
Oh, I dang. had to cut them. Um, so I had two large shanks. I had to cut them into four pieces. Wow. Also, not a problem. Um, I had about three pounds or what is that in kilos? A kilo and a half ish. If I got that right. Yeah. Uh, of <laughs> shanks. Doesn't matter. Roughly four large pieces, which is what I had. What you're going to do first is chop your onion, a couple of carrots, a couple of stalks of celery, and saute them to soften them in a skillet with a bit of butter and olive oil. And I would suggest cast iron because mm. it's, I think it's the best to brown the meat, which is what you're going to do next. And there's no sense using two pans. So you may as well just start out with your cast iron pan. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So you're going to soften your vegetables a little bit. That's your sofrito as we determined in the first half. Remember we talked about sofrito versus miroquai versus. Wait, wait, what was that word you just said? Nothing. <laughs> Damn I it. don't remember. <laughs> um, and the other one was the Jamaican, the three, Trin- the Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity. Right? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were comparing <laughs> all of these different um, household names or common terms for yeah. when you, when you get Put your three, three things together. <laughs> yeah. As a base. We also yeah. kind of just on a tangent as Ooh. we do here. Let's do we it. We also heard something about this one. We were chit chatting at the farmer's market with um, a woman who does from Quebec who yes. was telling us about Quebecois cooking and they have something similar as well where it's like the base of just about every recipe that's right has this um what was that it's just just all to say that it's a common starting point okay oh you can also just do this directly in your crock pot if you have like an instant pot that's also a slow cooker you can oh, use the saute right. function and do it directly in the pot but I still think the best is to brown the meat yeah and cast iron so i would say whether you put the veggies and saute them in the pot or in the cast iron doesn't matter but do your meat in the cast iron because i think it's better yeah okay it's that extra little step that just makes such a difference in the flavor of your meat and i find the texture too so highly recommend it so then when you've taken your veggies out and put them in the crock pot you want your pan medium to high heat a little bit of oil in there and salt and pepper your shanks okay on both sides dredge them in flour and then brown them um on each side two to three minutes kind of depends how hot your pan is you're not looking to cook your meat you're just looking to brown to give it a bit of extra flavor and as they're done take it out and put it into the crock pot so i couldn't fit all my meat in the pan again at once (laughs) so (laughs) i think i did like three pieces and then i had an extra piece um, so as they're done, put them in on top of the vegetables. Okay. So once your meat is in on top of the vegetables, uh, you're going to crush three cloves of garlic and sprinkle mm-hmm. that on top of the meat. And then back in your cast iron fry pan, you're going to put half a cup of white wine and let it come to a boil and then stir in your tomato passata, which is what we talked about. It's just pureed right. tomato and one and a half cups of chicken stock. Okay. That's the braising liquid that you're going to put into your crock pot. So you're just going to get it to boil and then you're going to pour it over your meat. I also had some fresh herbs that were, that were needing to be used or processed in some way. So I had a little bundle of um, rosemary and thyme that I just tied together with kitchen twine and I threw that in the pot. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that. And because it was still all on the stems and everything, I just tied it together so I can pick it back out at the end. I love a good little herb bundle. Bundle. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're then you're going to put your lid on. You're going to set your crock pot on high for six hours or low for eight. Okay. I actually have three settings on my slow cooker. So I put it on medium. Oh, I don't know. I do pretty much everything in the crock pot on medium. Okay. And I just left it for eight hours. I set it for eight. And I think it may have even been in there a little bit longer because I went away for, for <laughs> the afternoon and I was off doing things. And you set it and you forget it. That's exactly how you do it. And that's it. And then when it's done, it's just you can stick your fork in there. You can put a spoon in there and just like 
falls apart. Like it just, yeah, obviously take your herb bundle back out, separate the fat from the meat. So you're not getting a big mouthful Mm -hmm. of, and there you go. And I just made some plain mashed potatoes um, that we had it with and some green beans. And that was our dinner. So it's very simple as crock pot recipes should be. Yeah. Um, You could also do this on your stove or probably on your barbecue or in your oven if you want to do a like if you have a dutch oven that you can Mm -hmm. put a lid on because i was leaving the house the slow cooker was the way to go but if you were there and you can keep an eye on it you could also do it in that different way is your crock pot also an instant pot? is your instant pot it's the all-in-one one okay yeah cool i still don't have one of these devices so i'm always curious as to (laughs) I heard the com- the company is like going under. Oh no. <laughs> After all the hype. So maybe you're fine. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think of your also buco? What did I text you? Also good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the also buco is also good. Oh my gosh. I loved the texture of the meat when it came out of there. Like the it must be a really well marbled piece of mm-hmm. meat and has a lot of like good fat in it because it just every piece was so juicy like sometimes and I I find I struggle with this is when you're making one of those slow cooker all day things sometimes I'm disappointed by the texture of the meat at the end it's mm-hmm. soft but dry yeah I don't know if yeah. that ever happens to you this was not this meat and I don't know if it was because of the cut of meat I've never cooked with shanks before so I cannot wait to try this I now get the poem the poem is very (laughs) fitting because as I gobbled this down and barely (laughs) paused enough to taste it because it was just so damn good I felt like that warm comforting (laughs) full tummy and I was like this is the lion's paw that's the lion of contentment resting his <sighs> paw on you. Absolutely. I just wanted to like lie back down in bed and. <sighs> <laughs> it's definitely comfort food. Wow. It's no the kidding. definition of comfort food. I think so. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. There was nothing in there that you wouldn't just have. You don't even have to do the herb bundle thing. If you don't, you could put some dried yeah. herbs Maybe add them to the flour when you dredge your meat or, Ooh, yeah. or just sprinkle them sprinkle them into the liquid. You could do this however you like to do a braising. Mm-hmm. You could add more vegetables or different vegetables probably. I like that the sofrito kind of just becomes part of the sauce. Oh, like it all those totally just... vegetables just disappear into it, but give it some texture too. Yeah, I cannot wait to make this for my family because I did not share with them. There wasn't a lot. I have to say (laughs) that sounded like so much because they were such big pieces. But when as things do, when they cook down Mm. like that and the bones come out, then Mm -hmm. it's not actually as much meat as you think you're going to have. So don't be like, oh, no, I think one shank will do it. No, (laughs) it's not all the meat. We had four servings at my house and then Aaron had a serving like that was. That was pretty much, there was a tiny little, I had like, maybe it was like a quarter cup of meat that I like squirreled away so that I could enjoy it again, like the next day by myself. (laughs) So I could be like, and actually I thought it was even better leftover, kind of like the way you had it. I thought it's one of those things that just gets better. It just gets better with time. Yeah. This is, this is a really good recipe. I would highly recommend anybody to go and get some shanks. We know that you can get them from Charlotte at Chatworth's Mm -hmm. because this was some of our Chatworth's farm meat. Yeah, Yeah. it's really good. And it was delicious. So find your local butcher if you're not here with us and totally, totally Mm -hmm. do this. I would like to try it with oxtail. I've never had it. Like I've never bought that cut of meat. I've never bought that cut of meat. No. And so you'd have to look at what, how big they are. And what kind of weight you're you've got because i think you'd need more seems to me they're small right that's what i'm I'm picturing in my mind right now is i'm trying to figure out how big an oxtail would be but yeah no this is such a good recipe Mm -hmm. such a good recipe i really really liked the flavors in this and it's simple stuff it's not hard to find yeah and i think if you don't have chicken stock i always have it because i make it when i roast a chicken i just keep the bones and then i make a big pot of stock 
Mm -hmm. We all know Erin is like the queen of chicken stock. If you want a recipe for stock, we got it on the website. There you go. If you, I mean, you can certainly use store-bought. If you have mm -hmm. beef broth, that would be just as good. Even veggie broth. Yeah. But also, it doesn't really matter. You don't, it's not like you're tasting the broth. So you can mix that up. If you want to just use water, if you were like, ah, I forgot and I don't have any broth, just put water in there, maybe a bit more tomato or something to kind of boost yeah. it up. I think the wine is like an essential. We've talked about this before. I love wine and cooking. You could do red if you don't have white. Yeah, I feel like even recipes that don't have wine in it, if I'm frying something up in a pan and browning it, I'm always tossing in some sort of wine just to like scrape that that browning and get that liquid really nice and mm -hmm. I always have tasty. a bottle of that cooking sherry yes. in my pantry because um, then I'm not tempted to drink it and it's not going bad. <laughs> so I always have that. You can just put a splash of that in there and deglaze your pan with it. Yeah. I also think like mushrooms would be really good in here because I love a slow cooked mushroom. That would be really delicious. You could just make it your own. And actually the, the night that I cooked it, so I'd come home and a friend of ours was here mm. in the gym and she was like, what are you cooking? It smells so good. Cause I had just come home and I was like opening the pot and whatever as she was like saying hello. And so she had just a little taste like with a fork right from mm. like the slow cooker. And she was like, this would be so good with egg noodles. Like you, yes. you need to serve this with noodles or rice. I'm going to be tucking into this in the fall for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't have a crock pot and then maybe we can add to the recipe after you've done that and we can let people know what's the best way to. I'll be using uh, the braising method in the salt, fat, acid, heat cookbook. Cause that's what I go off of every time. And how does it differ? I can't remember. It's pretty much all the same, except for instead of tossing it into the crock pot, you're just layering it into a larger Dutch oven or pan or pot and you're just tossing it into your oven at a low temperature yeah so i'll cook it at like 250 260 all day yeah. yeah the worst is when you've done that and then it's still like not fork tender and i'm like what did i do yeah and you just have to wait yeah. longer and that's the hard part and it's weird because it gets to that point where it's not good and it sits there for a really long time and then it falls down and is good and getting that right is uh, i don't know yet <laughs> well and i've also found that depending on the cut of meat yes um, sometimes it's too big and before you yeah. start you should cut it into smaller pieces and i don't mean cutting my shank mm. which is already yeah. kind of a thinner piece i mean like if you had a roast yeah cut it into smaller chunks they'll cook um a little better or make way. sure it's bone in so that the bones in the middle, because I find that helps. Yeah, because the bone heats up and helps cook it from the inside. Yeah. And then it's your best indicator that it's done because the bone will just slip out and then you know it's go time. Yeah. Mm, go and eat time. <laughs> Everybody make some asobuco. Don't forget this so recipe. Good. This is a gooder. Yeah, so good. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube and on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. Word of mouth is the number one way people find a new podcast. And remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and leave a review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for jumping on and doing a last-minute recording so that I can cook it tomorrow. You know me, planning ahead. <laughs>